Uh, good morning. I wanted to try something different, a, um, a different way of recording uh, that I normally do. Um, and I just really wanted to start recording maybe an hour of me working in my studio. And this is sort of, for me, uh, almost like a prelude to maybe doing some live streams which I intend to do, um, except I have maybe some issues with uh, controlling my videos and my audios and I needed to be a certain way and I needed to be edited in a certain way and uh, so what I'm going to do is um, what I was going to do in my studio anyway, which is uh, continuing to work on the paintings that I'm working on for my exhibition at the end of this year. I will try and give some commentary here and there, but I won't be talking um, all the time and this won't be uh, a tutorial type of video. It's going to be me. Um, I said an hour, but an hour focusing for me is pretty long, so it's probably going to be somewhere around 30 minutes or two times 30 minutes. Okay, so thank you for watching. If you have any comments, questions, whatever, just let me know in the, uh, in the comments down below. Okay, so this is my current panel. I have I have four panels going on, but I think I'm going to call two of them done. I just need a little bit of time to uh, to accept that fact. And let me try and oh, there we go. Okay, so just adjusted the camera for my palette a little bit. So what you can see on my palette is um, titanium white. Uh, this is black. I'm using a, let me show you, I'm using a German vine. This is a black that is quite um, coarse. It's uh, They call it a medium grain, but I have no idea what that means. <laughs> it's just quite coarse. And it's very fast drying. I have burnt sienna, uh, raw umber, and burnt umber, and both of them are from um, Rubla. This is the burnt umber, and this is the raw umber. I'm having a cap problem here. As you can see, my caps keep breaking, so. This is, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but this is a warmer white than titanium white. It is called a lithopone, and I'm not sure if I pronounce it right. Um, this is a barium and zinc combination. Um, I live in Europe, so we can't get any lead. <clears throat> not that I want to, but um, this is a good replacement for lead white if you are out there looking for one. This is a medium. Um, they call it uh, Velasquez medium. It basically makes your paint stiffer, but not stiff as in short. So stiff and long. Reminds me a little bit of um, bubble gum. My work right now it has some basic layers here. Um, I'm going to keep part of this. I'm going to refine part of it also. And I have no clue what I want to do here. I'm just going to turn my phone off. Okay. Um, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do here. Uh, what I'm going to keep in terms of um, background, yeah, this for me is a bit of a panel that um, goes with the 
flow. I have some burnt sienna on my palette, very little. Um, sometimes it can be easier to warm up a gray with burnt sienna because it's not so dark as the uh, as the rest. So the zinc and barium white, that one, is low strength tint thingy. You can tell the quality of my uh, vocabulary goes down as I'm working. <laughs> this is probably the reason why I prefer to do voiceovers. as a non-native speaker of English it can be quite difficult to do one thing and to have to speak in a language that you're not used to Actually, I had this idea that maybe, you know, it was sitting on a chair-like object with a with the legs going down and the basically the kneecap being here, and then it, as you're working, it's you know with this style of working, it's quite easy to just change the um, the pose of something. And I'm actually thinking that maybe it needs a little bit more volume here, so maybe the lower leg goes like this because it's not visible what it is 
it's sitting on, so who cares anyway? <laughs> maybe the leg going like this, and then maybe the other leg going down. And that's going to fill up part of the composition here. Giving it more space here, right? Because it's relative to one another. And basically, I think most people prefer to have, composition-wise, more space on the side where the light is coming in than on the side of the shadow. That's a little bit too much.
gonna go and scratch a little bit. So if you're not into scratching sounds, you may want to turn down the volume for just a little bit. So this is, um, I think you call it steel wool. It's uh, the stuff you use in uh, in the kitchens when you're uh, cleaning pans that are not made out of Teflon, right? I think. Um, so it's this, uh, yeah, these steel curly set. Probably everyone's had one of these at some point. So I use them uh, in my studio. You need to be careful with them, as in you don't want to scratch through your primer, your um, your layer of gesso. So the thing with white is that <clears throat> I like to layer it, right? I have that, um, I think I I taught myself to do that working with acrylic paint. But in oil paint, uh, whites are slow drying. Well, in acrylic, they are also slow drying, but yeah, then you're talking about a difference in what seconds or minutes. Um, so here you're talking about a difference in days, right? These 
uh, umbers, they dry in 24 hours. These whites take days. Um, so when you layer them, it's not a, a one day flow, if you will. And that I struggled with uh, at first. And I had to learn, and I'm still, by the way, learning ways to deal with that um, by making the lower layers thinner, basically, which I find very, very frustrating um, because I don't like thin layers <laughs> at all. It's better, I think, in oil paint to get something right in the upper layers. Whereas sometimes with acrylics, the lower layers can, for instance, be uh, textured. And then you paint over them and that texture is gonna um, come through, right? So the lower layers can matter in acrylic painting. And I think in oil painting, unless you have the patience of a saint, It's going to be a very long process if you work that way. But I will say I've come a long way <laughs> from <laughs> having to finish a work uh, in the same day to uh, now being able to have four panels going. I've been working on them for a couple of weeks now. So. It's a process. I have no reference photo, by the way. <laughs> so, if I look a little bit doubtful here and there, uh, it's because I am. I have no reference. So I have no idea what I'm doing. Half the time. I'm trying to paint some sort of cloth thing. For my other panel, I actually at some point, because I had trouble consolidating all these shapes, I actually did create a reference for the, uh, for most of the folds. But I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that here. There is something creepy about working with a reference photo, but on the other hand, it, uh, it allows for a lot of freedom. And I think if you have enough experience painting certain things, yeah, you can get away with a lot of abstract elements and still make something recognizable. But I've also, you know, had these moments where I saw something that I painted and then my mother would come in and say, oh, it looks like a squirrel. Or it looks like what a, it, it, something that I obviously had not intended. So that is also a possibility. I did take a, um, a reference for the hands, by the way. And I'm still actually having, this is <clears throat> not a camera issue. I have to fix the, um, the relative size because this hand looks smaller than this uh, hand. I am not looking forward to having to fix that. 
It's weird. How's ja it's it's not a big panel. It's um let me get a ruler. Yeah, it's uh, 30 by 40 centimeters. Which I think is 12 by 16 inch. So the hands are not that big, but um, the human brain is exceptionally good at spotting things that are off. Okay, so I had to take a short break because there were some things going on on my phone. It's almost 5 p.m. here, so I'm going to lose some of the light for these two. So I may have about half an hour left that I can work. I have artificial light in my studio that I can set up but I don't like artificial light. <laughs> I have it for the winter, right? So you kind of need that in the winter. What I kind of, what I want to do for, for now, so that we can let that layer uh, settle a little bit is basically get the background out here right so that we have some complete layers and some some indication of value and what I mean by settle in it's pretty much just it's not going to be dry, because like I said, all this white is going to be slow drying. But some of the darker parts will be pretty dry tomorrow. You can tell with oil paint, you know, after a day, even when it's not dry. I know a lot of people call it tacky, um, which is maybe something that you have to learn how to work with. I don't know. I don't really have a problem with it. I like it when it's not so super um, slippery anymore. And yeah, okay, tacky, it, it pulls a little bit on your brush. Maybe it's because I'm used to working with acrylics that I don't mind that feeling.
I actually signed this panel. I don't know if you can see how the thingy is blocking it. Look. That's how confident I am. <laughs> I signed it because I wanted to try out um, a different brush and a different signature. So I figured I was going to try it out on on a panel, right? Just to make sure that it would work. And I figured here, maybe if I, I did it here and, and it wouldn't work, then <clears throat> I could still take it off um, without destroying underlying paint layers. So, of course, part of my brain is now thinking that <clears throat> I doomed this panel by signing it prematurely. going to add one more thing actually just going to pick I'm just going to clean this brush so one of the characteristics of this um, white is that it is quite transparent. Uh, it's a warmer white, it's a transparent white, and it has a low tinting strength, like I said. So it's basically lead, except it's not going to kill you. Uh, like I said before, uh, you cannot just order lead white here in Europe. Um, without having to fill in paperwork as a business, whatever. Um, I don't work with lead. I am never ever going to work with lead. So I've tried out this uh, white and compared it to titanium white and it's a very good addition to your palette. Both in mixing but also in... Um, yeah, I can imagine it's a very good white for clouds because of its uh, relative transparency. If you need more transparency, of course you can mix it with something like a gel medium.
All right, so I, I added some layers around the edge that I had before, and I can only do that if that edge is dry. So this is also for me um, part of learning, again, how, how my workflow needs to be when um, working with oils uh, as opposed to working with acrylic or other um, stuff like pastel mixed media. Uh, is that sometimes I forget what I want to do so I will finish a lower layer and then I'm thinking okay this is gonna be dry in I don't know three days four days who knows and then I want to do X and then I forget to write down X um, I don't know about your brain, but my brain does not remember when I, I put the panel back on my workspace. I get occupied with other things. So I keep uh, something that maybe you could call a ledger, where I keep notes of my work and things that I want to add, change, uh, but mostly add uh, in, in, in the next layer so that when I start working on that panel again I have a written record of the uh, direction that I want to uh, go in. This is just a tip for you if you know um, having, having a workflow sometimes is difficult especially when it changes and I don't do well with change. So I keep a lot of notebooks. That works for me. Uh, again, I'm going to leave this and in later sessions I will continue to work on this area. So I hope you enjoyed watching a little bit of this. I will make another video tomorrow probably for you to get myself into a recording flow again. And thank you for joining me. Have any comments, questions, let me know. Uh, down below and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye